During the week, I got the router mill finished, remade these blocks, took everything apart, hit it with a coat of shellac, even made a handle for the uh, Acme thread. I just need some nuts, two more nuts actually, from McMaster Car next time I put it in an order. I have yet to take it on its uh, maiden voyage, but soon. Looks like I beat Billy again. So I'm starting with a quick shop pickup, all horizontal surfaces. Gonna run the shop vac around. Get ready for the day. This is a customer drum. It's the one that I had to die and sand back and die again. Looks like it has at least one top coat. Some hoops are in the works. This is set up for another re-ring. These are the two drums we took apart last week and got started on. The Dazzle drum looks like it had bearing edges cut, probably ready for reassembly. That rope tension drum's part of the rental line. And I think this is second run at the Burl veneer. And I'm seeing some cracks, so he probably isn't happy about that. First order of the day, Bill found a couple more separations on this uh, older rope tension, so he's syringing some glue in, clamping it. Yeah, this is a this is rod tension actually. This is a mid-century Slingerland marching snare. And I gotta say, over the years, I've I've worked on a lot of these, and um, whoever made this particular shell was having a bad day. It might have been his last day. <laughs> it, was, it was a bad day at the Slingerland factory when this shell was made. So this had a coat of poly. I did a quick. Really light sand back with 320 just to smooth it out. It's gonna get hit with another coat Gonna sand these hoops back a little bit oil them oil the bedazzle shell. I Sanded those hoops back a little bit with steel wool just to smooth them out. They go with this drum and Then we'll see what else we can get into a couple more things landed on the board and My brain would really like to get a few things off of that board. So this piece is traditionally made of leather, but you make them out of shell stock. To be honest, I, I don't, yeah, I guess I have seen period drums that actually have leather on them. Uh, I've seen snare anchors made out of a bunch of things really, but um, a lot of reproductions use leather, but it sucks. Like it's- The holes rip out. Yeah, and it's not stable and it moves around. And it's just, yeah, they're, they're bad. So uh, I always make them out of wood and normally I just laser cut them because I have the, the whole layout all set, but uh, because this uses only three strands of this really thick gut, I got to measure the thickness of the gut and then lay out the six holes accordingly so that these will lay lay flat and, and evenly spaced. Uh, this gut's pretty cool, actually. I was thinking I might replace it with the more usual setup, but uh, this actually looks pretty cool. I'm kind of interested to see what it sounds like, so we're just gonna go with that. If it's still good, I don't see a reason not to. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's definitely still good. Uh, six strands is normally like too few for a drum this size, but this gut is really beefy and kind of has a cool texture, so I have a feeling it's actually gonna be pretty cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see see what this does. But the gut's in plenty good shape. I mean, it, it, you know, we'll definitely be able to use it. I just gotta make a snare anchor that doesn't suck. It's that time, Bill. <laughs> time for us to do blink ready for two covers. And I feel so me. That's not the name. Biggest trick with this for me is going fast enough to keep a wet edge so it doesn't get gummy. You're not pulling it all over the place. Don't go too heavy so you don't get drips. And then just trying to keep dust out of it, really. Which in a really big sawdust infested wood shop, 
That's the hard part. It's already starting to gum up over here. Mechanize these rollers. Probably do it easy with a simple little belt and a power drill. Someday. Turns out there is an old order for a stave drum. This is pine out of an old brownstone on Com Ave that our friend Ken was a project manager on the demo reno. So we got a bunch of this old growth pine. And had I known that we had these, I would have brought the router mill over for the maiden voyage, but I'll bring it next week. And Steve Weiss has ordered two more rope tension drums. I always love a good Steve Weiss order, good income, Fulfill the invoice quick and get paid. How practical is a bass drum on a battlefield, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that's it's a bad idea. <laughs> no, that's the core of a lot of this stuff is like, it's no, it's seriously, it has to be practical. There's no yeah. one cares if you're like, don't hit the drummer. It's like, no, you can't walk around with a 36 inch bass drum. Or <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not going to happen. To the best of my knowledge, that uh, the use of fife and drum in a military context comes from Switzerland that was brought to this country via this dude who helped there's even a, there's an episode of drunk history about this it's hilarious i just can't remember the guy's name it's not uh friedrich wilhelm von steuben yes is it? it is okay yeah i just that pulled guy. that off the top of my head i did not google that nice <laughs> no i'm kidding of course i googled that oh okay <laughs> well you are correct yes <laughs> that guy yeah so this is a 20 ton press shot press from harbor freight which is way more power than it needs for this, actually. It'd probably be better with, you know, a much smaller bottle jack so you have a little more control over it. And the uh, things that look like poorly designed gears are, I don't know, press plates. There are two laminations, a three-quarter ply. The recesses are so you have access to the rope or the rope's open because you're, he's going to run around this several times, you know, advancing the rope. Put some pressure on it, then you have the slack, so you gotta pull the slack out all the way around. Repeat until you get your base desired tension. And you wear gloves because the rope will tear the shit out of your hands. That's for sure. Doing just one drum's not so bad, but when you gotta do a bunch at once, it's brutal on the paws. flimsy and I'm a little concerned. It just collapses? That would suck. Yeah. It is thin. I noticed when I was oiling it that I was feeling deflection. Yeah, it's very thin. Like those old school uh, oatmeal tubes you used yeah. to play with as a kid. Yeah. Like, 
I legit think the leather is thicker than the shell. Uh, yeah, actually, actually, I think you're right. Uh, or the same thickness, maybe, but it's, it's really close either way. This is the one step that still baffles me. You ever like tried I, it? I think I'll have to, I'll have to try it before I, yeah. before my brain understands. Yeah, you just twist the rope into itself so it kind of naturally wants to coil up. And yeah, once you do it, it's like it's... Same with the drag rope. Yeah, it's just... How many times do you go around? Um, I try to not do more than four. I, I usually do at least three, but I don't want to do more than four because then it looks silly. Like even that, like... And then the last With one feeds through is, between the ropes and pinches. Yeah, it goes back down here and that just kind of like locks it in place. That's fine. Like that's on the on the low side of of a pitch I would want to go for anyway and I don't know. I'm kind of concerned that we're going to crack this shell if we get too crazy, so I don't want to do that. No. So, let's leave it be. I it's going to sound fine when it's done. Bill's episode of the Drum History Podcast was published this week, Monday or Tuesday, and it's really good. It's like an hour long. I've listened to it twice. So today we pulled up the Patreon bonus episode, and it's got some juice, and it's good. It's worth it. It's worth it. Really worth good it. interview. Thanks, buddy. So took this rod tensioner out of the clamp, scraped back the epoxy repair, and took the few minutes to hit it with Odie's oil. I think it was worth it. Looks great. Bill's got this bad boy roped up. Yeah, this uh, it's a drum made by George Carroll, who, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, worked for Cooperman, or with Cooperman, Pat Cooperman back in the day, and they had some kind of falling out, and um, he started making his own drums. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to describe this drum. Well, I'm trying to think of something nice to say. It looks like a drum? Uh, I can say that this drum is better now than it was when it came here. That's a nice thing. Bill's got to head out for some orchestra work. Another recording session tomorrow, but we got this one done off the board. This bad boy got reassembled, but it sounds like poop. So we need to swap out the top head. Looks good, sounds bad. Yeah, it looks great, but just, just needs a thinner head on top and then I think, I think it'll sound good. It's a cool drum. Once we get the word on whether or not he likes the hoops like this or they need to be painted, that can get pressed and assembled. Yep. That looks like it's almost ready for assembly, maybe a badge or two. Yeah, this just needs, I, got, I still gotta cut the snare beds and then um, just like polyurethane the inside. And then it's ready to put together. So that's cool. And then that stock over there is for the rope tension drum kit. That's the base in the back corner. Yep. Is that the snare in the forefront? Uh, no, that's a snare for a drum set for Matt Dudek. And do we have the stock for the Steve Weiss? I think so. Nice. I mean, we definitely have a couple 6-ply, 16-inch tubes. I, one of them I thought was claimed, but I think that client goes to us, so, yeah, Steve Weiss room now. And then that bad boy. And I actually like that sapwood edge. That's cool. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that's gonna be great. I mean, there's, again, this wood is impossible, so there's cracks to deal with, but at least this time the veneer went on flat, so I think it's gonna work. <laughs> Famous last words. All right. All right, yeah. so we almost got two off the board today. Close. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs>